point number seven in my this reordering has the feature that is closest to my observe my interest okay. and hence that becomes the in a sense this in that case will be t7 or x7 perfect it could be binary it could be anything all i'm assuming is the following again sort of uh, Yeah, so all I'm saying is that no matter what setup I'm going to consider, here is going to be the setting. That is, Y is the label that's between uh, in, in some interval. Okay? All right. Great. So um, my goal is just simply analyze this algorithm. Now, uh, uh, I still, I can, I should go to 1030. Okay. So my goal is to, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, so there are two answers to that. Uh, one is, well, I just want to do this, and I want to understand how well or how badly it does. And uh, that's actually uh, the answer I would like to sort of think about. Other ways, sort of when you want to get into comparison now, then you say, okay, look, uh, my if you are going to do your model, then you're going to choose it from some parametric class, right? I mean, this is a classical non-parametric argument, not my argument. But is it, look, uh, I want to sort of uh, learn linear function. I say, okay, go ahead, learn linear function, but who says it's a good thing? No, no. Then sort of, it's only sort of the, the base error, right? This, this is true. Sure, but then it'll be plus two epsilon, right? Maybe I'm not able to, okay. So here is, here is my argument, right? That sort of look, um, uh, so if you are, plus, Which, which one do we have asking? Okay, so are you asking this one or this uh, This one? Okay. So th this, this is, so when x is an x bar complement, that's correct. Uh, where x bar complement says that um, eta x, yes. Okay, but sort of, hang on. So, all right, I think, uh, um, let's say, what is eta, suppose eta x is ha, uh, half plus delta, okay? All right, what does that mean? That means in the binary case, probability of y, and let's suppose that sort of, uh, yeah, it's y, so y equals to 1 given x equals to x, right? This is equal to half plus delta. 
that means that probability of y equals to 0 given x equals to x is half minus delta, right? What will be your base classifier in this case? It will say that estimate always 1, okay? So that means that half minus delta times you will be wrong. And now let's say I, I, I estimated 0, right? Actually, that's good. That there is a subtlety, and sort of uh, so we were proud of the realizing this stu stupid fact because sort of the rest of the community sort of uh, keeps obsess obsessing about that. Okay. Um, I want to retain this space. Um, all right. So uh, this is the k-nearest neighbor algorithm. There are all sorts of variations now. The one variation is, and I'm not going to write it to uh, save some time is where you say, okay, I'm not going to choose k neighbors, fixed k neighbors, but I'm going to choose only those neighbors which are within small distance of me, say h. That'll be the fixed radius nearest neighbor. The other one would say, look, uh, you are writing this as if it's a equally weighted version. Why not, why not write the following version? Why not have something like alpha i y i over summation alpha i, where hopefully alpha i is a weight that you're putting on label i or um, data point i, which is proportional or some function, some monotonically decreasing function of your distance, okay? Uh, and this is what people would call kernel, uh, where this is designed, uh, used as, uh, as a solution of, uh, it's sort of, it's coming out of uh, applying some kernel function on the x and xi, okay? And, I'm not going to discuss any of these things. Instead, I'm going to just focus on this algorithm. Okay, all right. So let's just focus on this algorithm. And what I want to do is, I've got 10 minutes, so why don't we do the following? I'm going to write down um, one condition and two theorems. We'll come back and we'll finish the proofs of the theorem. And that's basically what I really want to cover in the, uh, at least some meaningful thing in the, this set of lecture, and then after that, we'll primarily go through a bunch of results that are known for other topics. Okay. So, okay, so one more condition I will assume, which is called Bessikovich condition, and I'll give you an example. Okay, so Bessikovich condition, uh, Bessikovich condition says the following that, uh, conditional expectation of y given that x is in a ball of radius r around point x, and now let me take the limit as r goes to zero, this is equal to eta of x. And in a sense, what it says is if I'm gonna use nearest neighbor style thing, if I don't have this, I mean, uh, there's no way you can sort of actually get anything out of it. Okay, and if you have this, then everything works. So in a sense, this is kind of a necessary and sufficient condition. One simple example is where you assume that eta is, let's say, uh, holder C alpha for some C and alpha greater than zero. That is, for any x comma x prime, eta of x comma eta of x prime is less than or equal to C times rho of x comma x prime. Okay, and this would imply that. Okay, so um, so here are the two two levels that we want to establish under this setup. So theorem one is, one is going to look a little ugly, uh, theorem two is going to look a little prettier, and the interpretation would make it clear that they're not that bad. Okay, so let me sort of state them precisely, and then sort of we'll, we'll go through them uh, in a second. So let's suppose you got some epsilon, some delta. The way you want to think of epsilon and delta is, epsilon is the error that you're trying to get onto your target of interest. Uh, and delta is the probability. So let's think of for a second this part. So let's say you want to get the, for any given x, you want to minim, uh, reduce, you have a good estimation, 
uh, that is within epsilon with probability at least one minus delta. Uh, then what it says is that under Besicovich's condition that exists some, some parameter h star greater than zero such that for all h in zero comma h star, I'm going to keep it open here, but if I had holder, then it will be closed. Uh, if you have the following conditions true, that is n greater than or equal to 8 over probability of ball of radius h around x. So remember, there is an x of interest. Uh, so you have some x in support of x of interest. If you have this true for that particular x, there is the number of points you have observed is larger than this. And the number of k that you are going to use is okay, and at least two times the range divided by epsilon square times log 4 over delta. Okay, so number of nearest neighbors, uh, forget this for a second, it scales like 1 over epsilon square, 1 over delta, that's roughly what you would think of. And then the n is larger than this, then what you would, uh, what it says that well, eta hat of k nearest neighbor of x minus eta of x is less than epsilon with probability greater than or equal to 1 minus delta. In a sense, uh, in, in words, this is not hard to see. So let's just sort of go through that for a second, right? Look, this is a ball of radius h. This is the probability that with which probability any point falls into this, okay? So if I have n, which is greater than 1 over this, okay, at least one of the points. It's like saying that I'm going to flip a coin. Uh, with this much probability, it will be within distance h. With probability 1 minus that, it won't be within distance h. If I have n, that is 1 over the bias of coin, I'm hopefully on average, I'll see at least one coin toss. Log 1 over delta would guarantee that I have seen enough of those coins, okay? So they've got some enough of that. And then I also want to make sure that sort of k, well, k is the number of things I'm going to see. Well, in a sense, now this is the binomial, right? With respect to which I'm going to see nearest neighbors in that radius h. Okay. All I'm saying is sort of, well, it should be half of it, which is guaranteeing that sort of I will see at least those many points. And it should scale like 1 over epsilon square 1 over delta, log 1 over delta. Well, where is this coming from? This is like saying that let's assume that I have, assume that I am giving you a number. Uh, so you are trying to estimate number theta. And I'm going to, every time I'm going to give you theta plus uh, Gaussian noise with mean zero and variance one, okay? One way I can just, I give you k of these, you average them, okay? How many points do you need to make sure that sort of this average is a good estimation of original thing within epsilon? Well, this is the number that will pop out, okay? So really there's no surprise that this happened. Just making sure that this is indeed technically true, there's some circulating, but that's basically what's happening, sorry. Well, and it's not harmful, it's just a sort of, I won't be, I won't have those many k. So, look, this is the, this is the probability with which you as a point are going to fall within radius h of me, okay? Uh, if I have n of those coins tossed, this is the probability which I'm going to see ahead. If I've got n of those tossed, this is the average number of uh, heads I'm going to see. I'm saying half of that. And this will sort of make sure that sort of everything holds fine with high probability. Sorry? This amount is empty, yes. This one? So this one, um, uh, so I, I made an explanation uh, with uh, kind of an assumption that sort of you already done that calculation once in your life. So here's the calculation you want to do. So suppose I have, um, I have some number theta, okay? I know it, you don't know it. 
you're going to ask me lots of questions. And every time I'm going to give you a random number, which is theta plus uh, a Gaussian noise with mean zero and variance one, okay? Now what you're going to do is you're going to get lots of these points. You're going to average them. Once you average them, this will theta plus a Gaussian random variable with mean zero and variance, let's say it's a K of them, a variance would be, okay, think about that. Because, uh, and then sort of, that will be small and how small it should be so that sort of this is less than epsilon or that is less than epsilon, this is the number you will get, okay? All right, so that's why this makes sense. Uh, uh, so no surprise, all right? And here is the theorem two and the theorem two is where, uh, we'll specialize it for holder. So in addition, you assume that it's holder C alpha, uh, then, uh, then I would say that, well, let's take A equals to this lower bound, that is K equals to uh, whatever that quantity is, uh, just a ceiling of that because we're looking for integers, and N is greater than or equal to capital N over delta max of, 2k8 log delta, okay, and uh, for our practical purposes, this is small, so this is roughly, again, sort of, uh, this is interpretation a bit, it's 2k n over delta, so let's say n is this number, or n is larger than or equal to this number, and what is capital N, where capital N is, uh, uh, which I'll define in a second, it's the, N is um, so h star by two delta covering number, and I'll define that in a second. Uh, so if n is larger than this, and k is exactly that, uh, then um, you would get that in expectation eta hat of x minus eta of x is less than or equal to epsilon plus three delta times y max minus y min, okay? Uh, just one quantity I have not defined, that is this uh, covering number, and, uh, uh, but beyond that, everything else is defined, okay? And again, so you can choose your delta if you want to make this pretty and make it look like epsilon. That's basically it. Okay, so what is the last quantity covering number? And after that, we will will break. So, um, okay, so you have a. Uh, probability measure px on a Polish space, um, then I would call uh, this as a covering number, so or rather, let's call it n px radius r delta covering number, if so, uh, as the smallest integer, assuming it's finite, and in case of Polish space, it will be finite, the smallest integer such that uh, there exists, let's call it a set k of delta, such that probability of k of delta is greater than equal to one minus epsilon. That is, most of the support belongs to this set, and this set is within union of n balls of radius r. That is, uh, I have, I can find n balls of radius r that covers most of the support. I want to find the smallest such n, and once I have that smallest such n, then um, as long as I have n larger than that, it'll work, okay? All right, and again, so the thought was that, look, uh, for, this result to be true really n depends on the probability of a ball, right? 
Now, I could have generic distribution, and then the probability of ball could be arbitrarily small or large. And that sort of, that lack of regularity makes it hard. So, for example, the very nice work uh, done by a sequence of folks, uh, uh, I'll give all the references. I think uh, it's beautifully summarized in book by Tsibako and uh, Audie Burton Tsibako, and before that, um, uh, Geoffrey and Devroy, okay, I'm forgetting, keep me forgetting the track of exact reference. They had this is a very interesting uh, condition which is called the strong density condition, which assumes certain regularity. Think of it, it's like uniform, but uh, much more general than just uniform distribution. Uh, that in a sense sort of alleviated that need of worrying about this, uh, the probability of uh, the heterogeneity. Our, my point is that well, you know you don't need to really worry about it because if you have reasonable space, then uh, the and if you have finite cover, then one way or the other things will be taken care of. Okay, there is maybe there will be a few bad sets, but then you can ignore them. Yeah. Good question. Where is it? Yes, it should show up in uh, H star should be epsilon over if I remember correctly. Okay, so that means that sort of uh, uh, alpha would determine h star, h star would determine n, would determine small n, okay? But the k would remain the same. That is, k would always scale like uh, one over epsilon square log one over delta. So, okay. uh, uh, capital N. Yeah, so that's what sort of this thing does nicely. And again, sort of the proof is straightforward. It's nothing uh, as that proof, we effectively proved it in words uh, because of the, it's just a, it's the binomial or sort of just a little bit of variation of Chernoff bound with a little bit of cleverness. But it's, uh, and this one is very simple. So I'll walk you through that. And depending on time, I might skip it or I might do it. Okay, and so that's it, this is it. And now. Uh, I'll come back after the break and we'll interpret this in terms of, we'll see what sorts of numbers come out in terms of given epsilon, how what is the n and what is the k you need. And that would, uh, and then we'll look at the what is the best uh, rates we know. And then so sort of let's compare and see sort of how much loss if there is loss and so on and so forth, okay? Where? There, right? Exactly. So, I mean, for that result to be true, you need enough points in the ball. But you, you don't know how small the ball should be or how large the ball should be. Or for a given epsilon, you really want ball to be small, but then sort of uh, how many points then you need because that depends on the how how sort of uh, nice your probability distribution is. And so that means that if you, unless you put some kind of lower bound, such as the strong density assumptions that's assumed in the statistics literature, you will, there's no way out. Okay, and my point is that you don't need those assumptions. Yes, that's absolutely. I mean, so we will sort of uh, evaluate those things. All right, so I think maybe it's a good time for us to break and then come back after 20 minutes, 10.55, and then we'll take some.